So we are live at the MSS Miami and on our panel, looking at the secure managed service provider of the future. We are delighted to be joined uh, by Devin Bender, Client Relationship Manager, PCH Technologies, Ray Bazzi, CEO for Diriga Technologies, and Christopher Huss, President at Galactic Technology Group. Lovely to have you on. Uh, how are you all? Thank you for having us. Great. Doing great. A little, little congested, so hear that from me. I'm sorry. <laughs> what what it, waiting it, for the hurricane here? That's all. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. It's probably a bit of uh, uh, getting ready for that, but uh, but but I hope I hope I hope uh, we keep the discussion uh, going. And you know what? It's great to have you all on because our debate is about the future of the MSP or the secure MSP or the MSP plus S, but through the prism of the, the, the skill set, right? And that's why it's fantastic, okay? Because we're putting the argument out there that maybe there is a balance between business and technical acumen. So on our panel, we do have colleagues that are more technical and we have colleagues who are more business and we have people that are in between. So that is why this is quite a fun panel. Um, and, and, you know, we are interested in the shape of this MSP. Um, Let's set the scene, though. Should we, Devin, view the MSP of the future through the customer of the future? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, clients are expecting more and trusting more in their MSPs um, and MSSPs. So I think having that business aspect at the end of the day, having that technical and business aspect is where you're going to have the most success um, being as a sales representative and on the marketing side of things at PCH Technologies, um, I've learned that there is a lot of value in providing education through an online and marketing brand that you're using through LinkedIn and other resources, um, and also still using those technical resources. So whenever I'm on a meeting and if I don't have you know, the knowledge to be able to give to the client, I just can bring on a technical resource. So having that balance between a business resource and a technical resource is where you're going to find the most value in the future MSPs. And and that value would would, would be in, you know, a, a proper relationship. And and so it can't all be in the weeds. Um it has to it has to take that strategic uh, approach so um ray i'll be interested in your thoughts who who is the the msp customer of the future um is it is it the same as as we have right now yeah i mean it hasn't really changed it's just the tools are different like the environment is different it's all cloud based and uh, our clients are having Difficulty navigating the cloud, knowing what's safe, what's not safe, um, which, how can they automate their business using cloud tools and, uh, you know, um, the SaaS environment, whether it's uh, Microsoft, Google, and all, all the other apps, their CRMs are in the cloud, are they all integrated? How can they keep their employees safe from a cyber attack? So. Same issues, just different uh, different tools to deal with. Same issues, different tools, and 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 so that's why an event such as this is kind of fun because we are looking at maybe those tools as maybe solution to this problem. Um, but 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 Christopher, I'd be interested in in looking at what we're going to do in twenty twenty three to to operate those tools because we had a lot of uh talks so far about automation and the fact that that's going to take uh mundane tasks out of the hair of uh you know um analysts and so on but um what does that do to our hiring strategy does it does it mean that we can't bring in too many entry-level people because all tasks will be more meaty and therefore will need a greater degree of expertise or i don't know where where where, where do you stand on that well, I think the complexity of the tools add the additional need for the personnel to match that level, right? So when you're looking at an analyst looking at something versus an engineer looking at something, it's two completely different approaches. It depends on what's the content, how well it's built out. You know, if you in as an MSP, we're really just taking what would be an IT department and, and making it available to a bunch of different customers versus just one business. 
So when you look at the approach that even Fortune 500 companies are taking when it comes into their SOC and how they're how they're analyzing data and how they're utilizing these tools, you may have you know one engineer that's trying to consolidate down so that you don't have to have 15 analysts, you only have to have five analysts. As an MSP, we take the same exact approach. Now, the downside to us is you know, if, if we don't accomplish that, our profit margins obviously taken into account from a business standpoint. So now we have to weigh, you know, can I hire two analysts or can I hire an engineer to be able to get one analyst, you know, or, and then if I multiply the amount of customers I have, you know, when, when does it come around? And then also the, the big important question today is, can you get that engineer? You know, I mean, we're talking about a very specialized area that, you know, you're, you're already talking the pool is small. And a lot of the times as a smaller MSP, if, if you're not, you know, being able to offer certain incentives, you have a fortune 500 company that's going to come in and say, you know, we're going to offer you, you know, the, the healthcare benefits, the additional benefits, you know, all that stuff that we can't compete with. So now you can't get that person right away that you, you are anticipating on getting. So it puts a lot of stress on, on the business as a whole. And then it also puts a lot of stress on those who don't have the knowledge that are, you're kind of leaning on because of the fact that, you know, they're, they're an important aspect to it, you know, to, to make sure that everything's running correctly. And then going back to the conversation, you know, that Luma was bringing up, yeah, you're able to automate a lot of processes, but then you need somebody to manage that. You don't have the engineer to manage that. So now you're putting somebody that doesn't have the skill set into that position and, and hoping that, you know, and, and going back to kind of the beginning of the, the conference, hoping that we all sleep well at night. You know, I mean, that's, that's a big portion of it. And then what happens if you lose that engineer? You know, now, now you got to throw that into the hat as well. I mean, you, we could have an engineer that does have that level of knowledge that you need. But then you have the Fortune 500 company come in and offer them double what they're getting paid today. And I guarantee you, everyone everyone here probably has seen that happen time and time again over the past three years. You know, I, I can tell you personally here, we've lost four people just because of the fact they got paid more somewhere else. And, and I can't compete with that because it was, you know, for what we're looking at from a skill set, they didn't match, but another company saw it, gave them what they wanted. I'm like, I, I can't argue that. Right. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to sit and fight saying that your skill set doesn't match a salary range at the end of the day. They got them doing something else and they got the money to do it. But then it leaves us in a, in a vulnerability now. And, and that's a whole nother aspect as an MSP that we have to balance. But then it can bring security issues in at the same time, because if you're if you're talking about adding security layers to it, monitoring what's going on, making sure you're on top of it. You know, getting those alerts and it's you know attacking it in a in a timely manner in order to make sure that maybe something that was small originally doesn't become huge. You just lost that key person. You're now you're now stuck. You know, as a business. Mm -hmm. So that that's a big portion in it. Yeah, and 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 that sort of hits home because it's not like MSPs are massive enterprise level uh, things and you just move things around and. And, and there are solutions out there, and, and there's one that sort of tries to record the entire life of the developer. And then if, and, and I think the advert says, if they get hit by a bus, then you can just replay it. I'm like, I, yes, I get that. But, but that's enterprise. That's really, really, really large. Um, and, uh, and quite a weird comparison. But anyway, that's, that's subjective. Um, so when we're talking skills, yes, we could be, as Chris said, looking for those technical skills that are difficult for everybody to find. Um, but Devin, do you feel that there's a there's there's a need to, you know, engineer or no, to increase the business and marketing skills, especially in an MSP? Yeah, I think, um, and this is something that we've been moving towards a lot too, you know, finding those technicians that are, you know, maybe not they don't have a background in business, but they can communicate with the end user. They can communicate with the client, um, create that relationship. I think that's what is going to be important in the future, making that trust and that relationship strong. Because um, like I said, there's a lot more expected of MSPs and MSSPs. So when you have that relationship 
and you have that communication and you have technicians that can, you know, sit down and have a conversation with someone and they're not just technical, um, that is very valuable and will help, you know, elongate that, that relationship. Um, and also like, I don't have a background I never had a background in, in cybersecurity and tech and anything. I went to school for marketing. Um, so I've had to learn a lot. So when you bring someone in who is more business oriented, um, the, you know, tech and cybersecurity industry is, is a big community and they're always offering resources and everyone's always sharing resources and, and trying to find the next best technology and the next best security product. So, um, you know, continuing that education and, and bringing that education in as well for the business, you know, resource is also important. And I do get that when we ever go to, you know, conferences and stuff like that. I'm, I'm always learning um, alongside the technicians to make sure that I'm up to date with and able to talk to the client in a less technical manner um, to be able to give them the information they need to make the right decisions. Which, which is really key because, you know, your end client could be a bakery and, they can't speak engineering, uh, you know, language. And it may be the engineering example they need, but they need it in some sort of coherent way. Um, and, and it's nice to see because because there is often a pressure, or maybe this isn't a good question for Ray. Is there a pressure? I don't want to load it. Is there a pressure on engineers to be customer facing, much as we see a pressure on marketing and business development to basically learn their tech uh, uh stuff yeah um that's a very good question uh, um, i think it's the the answer is both it's there is pressure in simple understand technology at a high level you know uh, knowing you know what uh you know understand it uh, you know at a thirty thousand foot level and understand how it works and how it comes into play and how it fits the puzzle. Um, uh, at the same token, like our technician, like when we hire technicians, we, we look at people's skills um, more than uh, technical skills sometimes. Like, you know, it's, especially if they're customer service or they're customer facing, you know, they're dealing with the clients, they're handling trouble tickets, they're, uh, you know, so, you could teach technology, but it's harder to teach people skills. Um, you know, so we look for those gems, you know, who are, uh, you know, you know, smart technology technologically, but also have the people skills. And um, you know, so uh, it's the answer is yes and yes. Yes and yes, I like that because you know a conference organizer's worst answer is it depends. Um, so yes and yes is a very good step forward. I like that. Um, um, so um, I guess Chris, do do you do you feel then that okay, enterprise level organizations is one thing where we can afford to segment, we can have specialists and 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 so on. Do you feel that we are on a path to turn all engineers into customer facing engineers? Because if not them, who? I think with the tools, going back to kind of the beginning of the conversation, you know, with the tools that are coming out, it it's almost as if you need several people that you they don't have to be customer facing because essentially they're never going to be the ones answering to the customer, right? They're the ones using the tool in order to make sure that it's optimized correctly, that they're looking at what's the output and being able to, to make sure that the people that would be customer facing get the correct data when it's appropriate, you know, because what, what we all, don't want to do is have where it's information overload, you know, or alert fatigue, where you end up with the scenario of the tools producing more information or more data that, you know, the people that are going to be calling the customer saying, hey, you know, we have a problem or we need to address something or, you know, the, the people that are going to be doing that, um, that they get overloaded. You know, and, and having the personnel in the background that are working on the tool, because I think a lot of the tools today are very effective. They're just not set up right. And then if if all you have is is technicians really interfacing with customers, which 
as an MSP, that's the balance, right? I mean, from a business standpoint, that's the balance we play as an MSP. How do we how do we balance when a customer calls in versus when I need to be running through maintenance tasks and optimizing, you know, the outputs and optimizing the tools, but the customer calls, I have an emergency, we need to handle it, or something's not working right and it needs to get handled because it's a business, you know, they're running a business as well. But at the same time, if we don't optimize the tool, we can't hit the level of efficiency that we need to. And I think there's a very delicate balance there that needs to come because, you know, if, if it doesn't get taken care of, you'll end up with alert fatigue, security starts taking a hit, efficiency start taking a hit. Now you need two extra technicians where you really didn't need them before, but because the tools aren't set up right, because we're all relying on the tools that, that we set up. I mean, at the end of the day, as an MSP, I'm only as efficient as how we set the tools up for the customer and maintain those. And I think as, as time goes on, we end up looking at, we need the soft skills. We need the interface with the customer because we have all these tickets coming in and we forget that I also need to hire that engineer that never is going to interface with a customer because they're just working on the tools that we have because I got so many more customers coming in the door. And I think that ends up getting lost in the MSP, especially now with MSSP. I mean, the, the, the amount of security tools that you have to balance and the amount of stuff that you have to take care of, either you're going to outsource that, but even outsourcing, you still have to take, you know, have to monitor the outsourcing because the last thing you need is to just all of a sudden get a whole bunch of stuff coming in because it's not getting addressed. You know, so and I've seen that happen to several, actually, you know, where where they, they call me and they're like, dude, I, I don't have time. It's like, I understand that. But, you know, your tools sending out all these emails and now you're ignoring them, <laughs> you know, so it's like, all right, well, that doesn't help the situation either. So, like, yeah, but I don't have the time. I'm like, but that's you know, and that's where the, the balance of costs come in and, and balancing out. You know, are we charging enough? I, mean, I think as MSPs, we're always we're always bumping up against: Are we charging enough to our customers in order to in order to have the personnel and the tools necessary to do our job efficiently and correctly? I think that's a big portion of it. Yeah, and are you charging enough? Will they stomach the extra charge? Because, as you know, everyone will be aware, you all probably receive a lot of knocks on the door every day. Please, can you? bundle this, bundle that. And hey, it might be the best thing since sliced bread, but how can you get the customer to buy into it? So using that and also building on what you said, Christopher, about tooling, Devin, what do you, what do you feel about the appetite? And we, we talked at the beginning, you know, know your customer of the future. What, what do we think about the appetite of the customer for adopting new security technology? Um, we have thus far assumed maybe that it will be a, of course, I need security. Is the conversation really that easy, especially from a marketing standpoint? Or, or is it, are we still in the, you know, did you know that you're at risk phase? Uh, I think it really depends on who your end decision maker is. So um, when we're talking to new companies or clients or prospects, um, the, the decision maker is always different. You know, you could have that, that person who is, a project manager at a construction company who has taken on the IT role at the company for five years now. And, you know, now they're realizing, okay, we need to maybe improve our internal IT and, or change our company that we're using because we're not happy. Um, but at the end of the day, they're the project manager, but they're still in charge of IT. And then you also have the situation where you're talking to the CEO or the CFO who's making those financial decisions. Um, so I think really who, whoever the decision maker is, is who you're kind of going to have to, you know, target that conversation towards. Um, and, you know, sometimes it is an easy conversation and sometimes it isn't. I think having someone, um, and I think we've benefited from this, having me as one of the, the people who are showing the, the client what the technology is, what the technology is doing it, making it more of a less technical conversation. If they're, if they are the CEO or a project manager and not really in a technical role, um, that does help because they're able to understand what we're implementing and why we're implementing it. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, I think it really is, you have to target that conversation on who the end decision maker is and um, why they wanted to start the discussion 
whether it be they're not happy with their current MSP or they do realize that they need to improve that technology because there is no option at this time. You know, they have cyber policies coming at them. They have other, maybe some of their clients are asking, what, what do you have in place for cybersecurity? So all of these things are coming at them. And I think a lot of people are realizing now that it, it is a need and it's not really an option anymore to implement, you know, security and have those, the security in place to protect their employees and their clients. Yeah. And, and I hope, I hope that that's, that's the case across the board because then it's just a case of fine tuning. What are you asking for? What are you offering? Um, and I don't know, Ray, are people coming to you and going, Hey, Ray, um, I want my security. You know how people go that, you know, like it, it belongs to them already, even though before they had it, like, is it as simple as that? Or are you still having a, a job convincing them? Yeah, it's a very good question, Fallon, because uh, it all depends on the relationship you have with your client. Uh, you know, if you're the trusted advisor and they look at, for, you know, they look at you for a consultant advisor, they'll do everything you tell them to do because they trust you. They don't want to get attacked. If you're still building that relationship, it's um, a new relationship. You got to tread lightly, you know, because, you um, you know, they think you're trying to sell them, you know, and they you want to sell them more and more and more. So you want to wait, you know, just you make a suggestion and you may uh, say, hey, I, I don't know if this is in your budget or not, but may, but we want you to think about for the future, you know, because, uh, you know, this is very important. You may not be ready for it, but. It's something to think about. This way, you're not coming across as trying to, you know, shove it down their throat and sell them, you know, what you're pushing your products on them or, or services. Uh, but if you have that relationship already built, um, they trust you and uh, they know that what you're recommending is for their own benefit. It's not about money, it's more about them protecting them then it's a different conversation altogether. Which which embodies that earlier question of business, marketing, and technical skill set. Because those two combined creates the trusted advisor, creates the trust. And you're, I mean, you may very well not make much uh, if you bundle the latest and greatest thing, but it's going to help you with your compliance, isn't it? It's going to help them with their compliance. And You'd hope that that would uh, that that would be good. So, so so I suppose and sometimes uh, tell them it's good to give them options. Like uh -huh. say, this is option one. This is our best recommendation. But hey, there's option two and three. Uh, a lot of the times when the client has options, they want to get the best option for them. They choose. They want to choose the best option because. It's like, I want the best one, like, but maybe you don't, you can't afford it, but uh, they come back and say, no, 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 I want the best one. So if you don't, so it's good to give them options, let them buy and not, don't sell them, let them buy the product. That's, that's my recommendation, you know, just, just, you know, educate and let them buy it themselves. I don't think that's inherently uh, quotable. Uh, don't sell it, let them buy. I like that. I think I think I'll use that. I'll remember that. Um, uh, so 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 Christopher, um, if we're then looking at this secure managed service provider of the future, and we're looking at it through the skill set, um, and this will top and tail from our future panel, which looks at the MSS of the future on the enterprise level, um, what then do you think we can do to improve product knowledge? Now, I think on the pre-call <clears throat> we mentioned. Well, we can go and send our engineers off to conferences for uh, various providers. And when I first looked at those conferences, let me be honest, I, I saw pitch, 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 pitch. And I could not understand why people were going there until I realized, and this is, I think, what you alluded to on the pre-call, you're going to buy it anyway. So you better have a better understanding of it for your customer's sake. Um, could could you elaborate on that process and and also the the challenges involved in sending uh, engineers to such conferences for product knowledge? Well, one of the one of the main 
portions of going to conferences also includes the networking amongst our peers. Um, you know, Devin alluded to that earlier, you know, that a lot of, a lot of it, you know, you go out, the, the beauty of the cybersecurity community, and I, and I use that word specifically, is because I, I haven't run into a scenario yet that nobody wants, you know, that somebody says, no, I'm not going to help you. Um, you know, so you go to these things really to do a lot of networking. In addition to trying to learn about what's new, I think um, there's a lot of overlap, you know, in, in technologies. I know if, if you go around asking, hey, what are your pain points? Um, you know, they'll give you a list of the pain points and then somebody will go out, and produce that product. But you, there's already four products that'll do that, but nobody knows that they exist because it's a big world. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm sure we've all run into that. There's 15 tools for that all technically do the same thing a little different. Right. So, you know, you got to figure out where you fit in with all that, because you can't have every tool under the sun because that's unaffordable. Um, at the same time, you got to figure out, you know, what are your engineers going to spend time learning because you can't learn everything. And then when you find the gaps that you may have, who are you going to reach out to? You know, I mean, that's uh, from an engineering standpoint, that that's that's a big portion of it. Um, and that goes for anyone that's that's really in the space we're in. You know, it, it's not just as an MSP, as an MSSP, but even if you're in corporate America, those who usually move up the fastest are the ones that make the most friends, you know, in addition to you know, business knowledge and stuff like that. But the ones that move up, it's like they're able to, to have the answer for something that no one else had just because they made one phone call to somebody they met at a conference two years ago. You know, that happens a lot. So, you know, making those relationships is a big portion of the conference, um, you know, and going around and, and, and creating that is, is very big. In addition to just hearing about what's new. I mean, Cisco comes out with stuff that's new all the time. Microsoft comes out with stuff that's new all the time. They have engineers that are sitting there thinking about stuff all day long. And, and we're sitting here just trying to get through the day, right? So how do you balance, you know, going through a day and trying to just take care of, you know, tickets that come in, customer concerns, security related items, and try to stay on top of what all the guys at Microsoft and Cisco are thinking of new stuff and trying to implement that, you know, um, I can, I can think of a dozen scenarios right now where we walked into, you know, potentially new customers and, and they have no idea kind of the direction Microsoft's going with Azure and Windows and, and how the server, Windows server of the future is going to be. I mean, the Microsoft's revamping everything around Azure. So because of a lot of those changes, we've, we've actually walked in and, and said, hey, listen, I, you know, it you guys are basically 10 years behind in the way that everything's operating. We're going to bring you up to speed with Azure and using the new Azure AD integrations and stuff like that. So, you know, staying on top of that stuff is very important because then all of a sudden you realize you're, you're out of date. And then the big issue with that is security. I mean, at the end of the day, security, the minute, what, TLS 1.1 has been hacked now for, what, four or five years? I mean, if you're running on TLS 1, I mean, it's gone. <laughs> you're basically just waiting to get hacked, you know? So that there's a lot, of, a lot of areas in that where the security becomes a vulnerability because of the lack of knowledge, because you're not involved enough to know what's out there. Um, so, you know, and, and, and we kind of talk about all this stuff and, and how do you how do you kind of mitigate that? You know, I mean, if if how do you the, the biggest vulnerability you have is the stuff you don't know, right? And and you can't, you know, if you're not getting educated, and I know we're all here, you know, part of the 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 greatest conference part of Miami, right? Right. I gotta throw the plug out there. Uh, you know, so we're here and and trying to learn more as much as we can, but you know, you, we're competing against people that might not be doing that and and creating those vulnerabilities when we look at a security portion into it um that that you know everybody wonders why, you know why are there so many security vulnerabilities out there well you got to look at okay are people really involved in what's going on out out in the world or are they too focused on day-to-day -day stuff and staying at what they're comfortable with so i think that's a big portion of it
Yeah, and 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 what they're comfortable with, you know, is is often what sells. And and hey, I know, and we all know that people have different backgrounds. Uh, people start managed service providers often for a different reason than maybe someone did a very large managed security service provider. Uh, it's it's a different background. Um, so it, it, it's different levels of comfort. And so we do see some managed service providers offering um, things that they previously were not comfortable with. Um, some training, some, you know, we even heard on a different thing, CCTV access control biometrics, which is absolutely alarming to a lot of MSPs is no way. I will never touch that same MSP. And that, that's a bit of a moonshot I throw out there. Um, Devin, I'd be interested. What do you, what do you think tomorrow's or 2023's MSP is going to want to bundle, want to sell that maybe they're not doing now? Um, I mean, this kind of just goes into what Christopher said, like Cisco, all these companies, Kaseya, they're always coming out with the next new tool. So I think bundling those tools um, and making them, you know, I mean, I kind of disagree with Ray. I sell in a different way because I think there is one bundle. That's the way we sell it. We have one bundle and the only difference is going to be how much support you need. Um, I personally think, you know, the tools that you put in place, like this is how, this is what makes you secure. Um, if you don't have all these tools, there's some, a hole somewhere. Um, so that's why we strategically put together a bundle that has multi-layers, that has each hole covered. And if you don't have all these tools, then we don't really want to take you on as a client because we don't want to have that vulnerability either. Um, so that's kind of how we sell, which is different. I don't think that there's right or wrong. Um, I just think that having the one bundle that we have and then offering the different levels of help desk support is where we found success. And I think that is where it will go in 2023. Um, you're either secure or you're not. Um, you have these tools in place for a reason. The MSP is strategically putting them in place for a reason. So um, I think that you know clients and customers and companies need to need to trust in their MSPs and understand that they're they're implementing these tools for a reason um, and and trust in their, like you said, they're a trusted advisor, um, not so much just an MSP. They should be trusting in them and having a relationship with them um, to understand why these tools are needed. Um, so that's where I think the, the MSPs are moving towards in 2023, you know, being that trusted advisor, um, having relationships, long-term relationships with clients and, and building that trust. Yeah, absolutely. And that trust is what stops the often over-reported demise of the MSP. Uh, everyone, uh, you know, each year, I don't know, someone puts on, on, on a headline, maybe for the CRN network or something, um, MSP consolidation at record levels. Uh, okay, but the reason the 50 mile sweet spot works is because of that technical and business uh, acumen balance and the fact that they are a trusted advisor, which is a bit different to the MSS, the enterprise MSS world, um, which, are, which, are, which are, I always like to reflect on. Ray, um, where, where do you hope we could end up at the end of uh, today's conference? Um, I, I, I know it's a very lofty question, but I, but I like to ask it. I think, you know, MS, MSPs should... Uh think about themselves as consultants, more as a consultant. And, you know, they're there to listen and understand and become more business people. They would need to understand their customer's business. What, what makes their customer money? What's, what, what's that revenue? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, our, our goal is revenue loss prevention. You know, like when, when, when there's an event, like a cyber event, it's going to affect revenue. It's going to affect reputation. And, you know, so we come in to prevent that loss. So, um, so we come in and do what it takes. So not only we need to think about ourselves as like managed service provider, just to keep things going, you know, uh, status quo is we need to be more proactive and think about, you know, uh, you know, are they, we, you know, vulnerable, do vulnerability assessments, penetration testing, like evolve into those roles where we're, we're constantly, you know, ahead, you know, and, and we need to be able to sell those services to our clients. Like they need to understand like, hey, it's, uh, 
it's not you need to be in compliance not because the industry it's because of your security uh, you know like we have a lot of cmmc clients like they have to get cmmc uh, ready otherwise they can't get any business from the dod right so but we try to tell them it's not just about that it's about protecting your business the dod is in a way it's a good thing that they're enforcing cmmc <laughs> But, you know, having those uh, readiness from the industry, uh, you know, is important to, you know, help you stay secure. So don't do it just to be compliant. Do it because it's going to help your business. And it's at the end of the day, it's a revenue loss prevention. And that's how, how we do it. Revenue loss prevention, exactly as we found it in the physical community. And we'll see the physical community later on today. Um, but uh, but yeah, I like that. I think that's a great way to leave it. We're looking at the business and the technical acumen balance. Um, it's going to be different for every organization, but I, I like that prism rather than maybe a couple of years ago, I might have had a panel that literally went, right, what's next for the MSP, which is fine, but I, but I like to look at it through the talent. Um, and and we'll we'll look conversely at the talent for the MSS um, in in a little bit as well. Um, so Christopher, Ray, and Devin, thanks for being such great panelists. Um, really enjoyed having you on. Um, please stay in the thanks. audience. I will put you back. But a big virtual round of applause for you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'll see you very soon. Bye -bye.